tools of calculus to uh, come up with an expression relating work and the change in kinetic energy for an object. So I want to derive this. We are going to assume there's no change in the potential energy, no potential energy constant. And the work is just going to uh, change the kinetic energy. Work is uh, the force times the displacement. These are vectors. And we're going to take a special situation here where the uh, force and the displacement are parallel. So the angle will be 0. And cosine of 0 is a factor of 1. So we just get that work is the force times the displacement. However, we are going to allow the force to be variable. Uh, the force will be variable. So to come up with the uh, calculation of work, we have to do an antiderivative of this variable force in dx, the integration variable. Um, when f equals ma, um, typically we're going to let the mass be constant in that situation. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. And write out here the um, force as a function of position. We're going to get to force as a function of position. Starting with the definition of acceleration is really the rate of change of the velocity. So this derivative, the derivative of the velocity with respect to time. We need to alter the variables here to go to the x. So we're going to accomplish this by rewriting the derivative velocity with respect to time as dv over dx times dx over dt. We're inserting a dx, an infinitesimal displacement on the numerator and the denominator. And then you can recognize out here dx over dt is the velocity. Um, so moving on down, we have an expression here for the uh, early acceleration in terms of the derivative of the velocity with respect to x multiplied by the velocity. Um, we're going to now use this. So here's our f of x. Again, we need f of x expression. Um, so mass times velocity. So the mass is coming from up here. And f equals ma. Mass is going to be constant in this uh, derivation. And the derivative here of velocity with respect to time is replaced with velocity times the derivative of velocity with respect to position. Now, let's see what happens when we put that into the antiderivative. Um, so I'll pull up my page here just a little bit for you. So work is the antiderivative from, from starting um, position to an ending position. This variable force and dx is the integration variable. We have uh, replacing f of x with mv dv dx, and then dx was already here. The dx is canceled. And we end up with a velocity antiderivative. So we have the mass is constant that comes out in front of the antiderivative. And we change the limits instead of the x's that relate to dx. We change them to the initial and final velocity for the dv. This is a straightforward antiderivative, v to the first power. When we take an antiderivative, the power goes up by 1, and we divide by the new power. So again, the mass that's out in front, that stays there. The antiderivative of v dv, we get v squared over 2. We have to evaluate that at the two limits, the upper limit and the lower limit. So we first put in the v2. We get the v2 squared, and then we subtract when we insert the value of the lower limit. So v1 squared over 2. And you can see there's a factor of a half that uh, can be uh, applied here and distribute m through the parentheses. We end up with the expression that the work done on the object is equal to the final kinetic energy minus the initial kinetic energy. v2 is the final velocity. v1 is the initial velocity. So in the situation where the potential energy is not changing, the work is changing the kinetic energy. And the tools of calculus have provided that expression for us. So if you have questions on this, please ask your instructor. 
and keep practicing calculus-based physics.